Yay. So like I said, I have it open in um in LinkedIn, so I'm just watching it. I'm watching people jump on. Cool. And I'll welcome everybody as they come on. All right. Oh, and Barb is on from Winnipeg. You go, Barb. Let's see. What's the weather like in Winnipeg? I want to laugh. <laughs> Let's look. How bad can the weather be? Oh, I think spring is here. It's probably nice. Yeah, whatever. Winnipeg is a whopping, oh, 48 and rainy. Beautiful. <laughs> All right, just about live. All right, we are live. Hey, folks um, that are dialing in. Make sure you grab a coffee. Comment section, let us know what part of the world you're in. Um, if you're curious, yes, Zach and I are wearing the same shirt. You look so <laughs> nice, Zach. Um, <laughs> That's meant to be. This is the only like Canadian shirt I own. I wore it just for you, Zach. And evidently, we both shop at the same place. I was trying to represent, you know. I wasn't yeah, me sure. too. <laughs> yeah. Just so everybody knows, I'm wearing shorts and I have no shoes on. So let's just balance this out because I am in Florida. Um, <laughs> We got folks from Chicago, North Carolina, uh, Winnipeg, Barb in Winnipeg, where it is rainy and 48 degrees right now. I do not know what that is in Celsius. Uh, Jacksonville being in the mid 80s today. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's what, 46, I think, in Vancouver right now. Uh, <laughs> just, <laughs> just beautiful. Uh, and like I said, everybody, smack the like button, share this thing. Uh, share it out to your posts. We appreciate getting a good audience in. Um, and we really appreciate you asking questions. The more questions you ask, the more fun this gets. Um, so with that, oh, a Duke fan. All right. I, I had to ask. We had somebody jumping on from Even in North Carolina, Shridhar. Um, so if you live in North Carolina, you're either Duke or a UNC fan. Um, sorry, NC State. And there are other colleges. <laughs> in North Carolina, but come on. Those are the only two that matter. Yes, the theme for today is twinning. Thank you, Kim Hong. Knock it off. All right. With that, <laughs> let's jump in. Good morning, guys. Welcome to the 19th episode of FinTech Insider, the breakfast show place and the show from the folks at 11FS bringing you interesting insights into the FinTech and banking landscape. I am Sam Mall, 11FS Managing Director of North America. I'll be your host for this morning show coming to you live from Jacksonville, Florida from my 17-year-old daughter's bedroom because that's where my router is as those have been on here understand let us know where you're watching from we'd love to hear for our viewers are based and as always ask questions this is a live stream so share it be involved and ask today we're happy to be joined by zach cohen chief operating officer at trulio on today's episode we'll be looking at what trulio does what identification services such as companies like trulio can mean for people without access to traditional id documentation now the current climate is affecting the way they work all right, Zach, one, where are you in the world? Right here in Vancouver, BC, Canada. Your favorite TV show or film that was filmed in Vancouver, BC, Canada. Oh, wow. Jeez. You know, there are so many. I know. It's been, uh, it's been amazing. Um, you know, I don't even know what the favorite one is. Though. I'm not a huge uh, so TV easy. show. I hear there's a reality TV show on right now, and there's a girl from Vancouver in it. But I haven't been uh, punished to watch it just yet. Okay, that was a shameful answer. I'll help for everybody. Uh, best TV series was uh, Battlestar Galactica, the reboot in the oh. 2000s. I mean, not even close. Uh, film, I'm going with Deadpool because it's freaking Deadpool, man. It's Ryan Reynolds. So that's what we're going with. Um, I'm here for you, Zach, to answer all the questions. Throw my vote behind that. That's a good one. Yeah, and, and yes, we are. For those that are coming in from San Diego, from Manchester in the UK, Austin, Texas, um, we are wearing the same shirt. Um, you, you have, you have better hair. Your haircut looks good. You're <laughs> tight on the sides. Yeah. The home haircut. That's the one side. That's the one part we got right. <laughs> yeah. I'm no, I'm not doing a home haircut. Uh, my wife cut my son's hair once and he still has pictures of it that he shows to the barber and goes, don't do that. So <laughs> that's a true story, by the way. All right, Zach, let's start with Trulio. What's the company? What do you do? What do you focus on? Yeah, well, it's true you, uh, Sam. No, and, and Jacksonville is truly yo. 
Kim yeah, Hong has yeah. corrected me on this for five years. I still like Chulio, but truly. Yeah. All ahead. right, well, well, we'll run with it. Uh, you know, to give you, to set the stage, sort of where we, what we do and where we come from, um, I think it's easiest to think about what's been happening in the world for uh, many years now, and, uh, particularly relevant today, right? I, I don't think there's a clear message out there that everything we once knew that was done face-to-face, in person, must have a digital only experience now. Right? And, and the biggest yeah. barrier to realizing this is ensuring that we have some level of trust online and offline. And so, with that, Truly was founded uh, back in 2011. Uh, we're now a global online identity verification platform, and we enable businesses of all kinds uh, to onboard their customers while adhering to regulations, like PYC and ML. Uh, while preventing fraud uh, and establishing trust and safety uh, within the ecosystem. Um, so we're currently active in, in over 100 countries today around the world. Uh, and we offer a single developer-friendly API uh, to address that infinitely important question of, is the person signing up for my services online are they really who they say they are? And uh, some of the major customer segments that leverage our identity network today uh, include uh, FinTech, Big Crowd Today, uh, FinServe, Big Tech, uh, marketplaces, uh, but also a lot of really cool next-gen services that uh, focus on financial inclusion as their mission in the world as well. So that's a little bit about Truly. You know, it's, and it's a, an incredibly hot area to be in for multiple reasons. I mean, you think about what we're going through right now, right? Um, you know, you riding us out in Vancouver, me in Jacksonville, the sheer volume of online shopping, digital account opening that's going on right now. Um, it's a good, good spot to be in and also a challenging one too, Zach. I mean, is it not? I mean, there, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming regulations change on you quite frequently, um, uh, especially as you're expanding to different countries, the requirements um, on how you go through and do identification has got to be tough. Yeah, well, you think about the businesses that launch today. Very few of them are one jurisdiction only. You know, if you're launching an e-commerce shop or you're launching some type of uh, network online, you want to be able to access folks from all around the world. And the biggest question around that, especially when money is changing hands, or if there's any type of transaction-based interaction, uh, the regulatory environment is the first question that your team needs to answer. And it can be daunting, right? Especially when you're a small company or a big company, frankly. Small companies because you have limited resources, companies because there's a lot of uh, risk involved in terms of exposure right? and so being able to access a single partner that can help you manage that from a centralized spot but be accessible to all around the world through all your business units is incredibly helpful and uh, we've just learned a ton uh, with the support of our customers and our team at Trueview as we've grown about how best to handle them. It, it must be the shirt and the hair, Zach, but for some reason, our international um, audience today is ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, we got, we have India, Kuala Lumpur, um, Egypt, uh, oh my God, um, uh, Ruston, Louisiana, hey, Corey. Uh, <laughs> but you know what, Sam, you know the first stat, so we do, um, you know, all hands and, and quarterly sit-ups with the whole company. The first stat I always show is how many countries our customers transacted in over the period of time we're looking at. It's, it's just so cool uh, to see all the use cases uh, and to see the, the real impact we have around the world, which is important to us as a business with, uh, with a mission. Now. You know, one of the things I want to do is be selfish, um, if you don't mind and hit on this on this topic because right now in the US, right? So the US supposedly, um, you know, top of our game when it comes to anything digital and online, the rest of you in the world can laugh at that comment, but supposedly we got our act together, right? We know what we're doing. Um, here's reality, state by state, people are trying to file for unemployment, right? Easily official numbers, 26 million unemployed, unofficially we're mid thirties probably. Um, everybody hammering individual states on appointment systems. And you know what they're finding besides just latency and, you know, server availability, one of the, one of the biggest, biggest holdups in that system is identity verification. I, I'm still befuddled by that, but that's true. I mean, it is falling over left and right um, in these systems. So Zach, let's go ahead and brag a little bit. How easy is it to do an integration with you guys? 
Yeah, and you know, just to add to that point, Sam, it's it's the difficulty also, you know, it's rife with uh, people that are trying to take advantage of the system as well and yeah. see it, but it happens. You know, people crises, um, and so it's a big concern for organizations that are trying to distribute funds or, or trying to identify the folks before uh, some type of transaction occurs. So yeah, it, it's it's dead simple. Uh, we focus really, uh, you know, hard and for a long time to make sure that folks can connect to our platform uh, within minutes. And so we have an instant onboarding workflow right now where developers or organizations of any size can download a credential and be up and running within literally minutes um, and have transactions flow uh, in the U.S., around the world, to any of the countries we service. And for larger organizations that have more complex requirements and more sophisticated needs, um, you know, we see customers launch within a day or two. Uh, it's it's uh, it's very important to us that uh, folks can, can integrate quickly. Um, and uh, you know, one of our models around here is uh, crushing our customers with love. So uh, we try to make sure that they're helped uh, along the way the whole time. You know, one of the challenges because again, you're across multiple. Um, uh, geolocations that you work with, right? Um, all over the world. Um, when when you start getting into different countries, uh, let me let me ask, let me pre preface it with this question: How many people live without access to traditional ID documentation? So in the U.S., right, it would be our Social Security card, our driver's license, a passport. What about in other areas of the world? Yeah, you know, uh, funny enough, the World Bank did a study about this uh, a little while ago, and, and they estimate over a billion. Wow. The, you know, unbanked, underbanked, but also folks that just don't have, uh, you know, the ability to verify themselves and to prove that they exist. I mean, how crazy is that? So yeah. about uh, financial inclusion, there's a step before that just to even be able to prove that they exist. Um, and then how do we uh, operationalize that to give them access to a lot of the things like the online economy that we take for granted? Uh, and, and frankly, uh, truly you, we, uh, you know, we really started in uh, the developing markets in the developing world. Uh, and so that's, that's a big focus for us. And, you know, today we cover over 5 billion people. Um, but, you know, those last couple billion are the hardest. Yeah. And, and that's what's uh, near and dear to our hearts uh, to make sure that we can, uh, you know, reach those, those last mile of population that need to be involved. Yeah, you know, we use that term a ton in fintech, don't we? The last mile, right? In this case, this is more like the last 5,000 miles. <laughs> when you look at a billion people um, plus. Uh, a, a, we've already had one good question come in, I, I, and I love hitting on the questions. All right. Um, so um, from Sidrahar, awesome service, by the way. Two questions. One, your document verification service. It verifies the document is authentic or not. Um, it does not verify the user presenting said document as the authorized holder of the document. Is that correct? Yeah, so we have some great partners on our platform. When you think about Truly You, we really are an identity network, right? And so we connect our customers to a variety of reliable and reputable data sets from all around the world. And so document verification has uh, tiers within the tiers. And okay. so, yes. Uh, make sure that that document is uh, legitimate. Uh, we can also do things like compare that document to the individual holder, right? And so you do a, a selfie, take a picture of yourself and the document. Yeah. But what's unique about TrueU is we can take that one step further and ensure that the identity information on the document actually also matches a further third party reliable data source. And so while the question is talking about fraud, right, and, and how what if I just create an ID and then, hey, I'm the same person in the picture, but with Truly You, we can actually take that one step further and do a variety of other layered checks to make sure that that individual is actually established in a credit bureau, in a government record, in a driver's license record, in even a mobile carrier record. And every step and layer you take um, reduces the risk of fraud by that same level. Yeah, so so to follow on his question, you touched on a whole bunch of this in there. What's the source of truth for verifying the documents? Is it the issuing agency or cross-checking across multiple data sources, which you pretty much have answered, right? It's the more touch points you can have. 
and get that complete picture, right? Yeah, and every every jurisdiction's at a different level of um, sophistication, right? So um, in the U.S., uh, the availability of reputable data is high. If we go to a country in Africa or the Middle East, um, we have to attempt a variety of different types of tools, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, the presence and coverage is lower. But that's part of what we do. We have entire teams that work directly on the ground floor in these countries to help um, you know, really operationalize uh, data assets for a compliance for fraud prevention use cases specifically. And uh, you know, a big part of how we uh, reach those uh, next you know, level markets. You know, there's so many use cases when you think about this, right? And like you talked about, there's multiple verticals when it comes to, to industry where, you know, solutions like Truly You make all the sense in the world. You know, one that really springs to mind and it's getting a lot of conversation in the U.S. is around, uh, especially taking into account COVID, for listeners that were overseas, we're going through an election cycle um, in the U.S. Uh, yeah, everyone laugh and pray and drink because <laughs> it is what it is. But we're going through an election cycle. And so one of the things we're looking at is potentially how do you manage an, an election in, during, a, during a pandemic? And so you've got states that are, are pushing the, the concept of um, you know voting via mail, for example, right? Uh, which by the way, I've done for 20 years of my life. Um, <laughs> but that requires authenticating users, right? And preventing fraud at, at a massive scale. Yes, it does. Yeah. And so yeah, I'll be, I'll be interesting to see the different solutions or how they approach this. Yeah, and, and, and you, you absolutely have to address that question. I mean, I think if there was a question to address, that is the one to address. Yeah. And you know, without, you know, divulging customers specifically, we've worked on a variety of use cases similar to that. Um, it's an exciting one, uh, and it's an incredibly important one. But, you know, you, you mentioned all the, all the different use cases. I think that's what the coolest thing about working uh, here is is we get to see all this different variety of, of, of levels and ways that customers layer our tools into create trust online and some clients use cases. And that's where we started. We're seeing more and more driving towards trust and safety because while everybody's coming online, making sure that your ecosystem, your population that are actually using your services is legitimate is just a huge issue, right? And so- yeah. You can leverage our tools for a variety of different ways, and it's super convenient for the end user. Uh, the experience is seamless, and so uh, there are a lot of reasons why not. Yeah, can can you do me a favor? Let's talk a little about about um, truly use involvement with Stand for Small. What what is Stand for Small? I'm not familiar with that program. Yeah, it's well, it's brand new. So oh, that's uh, why. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it was just uh, just launched uh, last week. Um, it's a really great initiative, actually. Um, so it was initiated by American Express. Uh, it's a coalition of about 40 leading businesses that are dedicated to providing something meaningful, right? Meaningful support to SMEs, uh, small and medium-sized enterprises uh, during and throughout the current crisis. Uh, and so we were, uh, you know, blessed and, and very fortunate to get involved. It's important to us. We have a large and growing clientele of, of you know, we call SMBs, small and medium-sized businesses that leverage our services. And so for Stand for Small on our side, what we're doing is we're offering uh, three free months of services. Oh, wow. okay. Launch with Truly You and get your first three months free on an SMB plan um, and help you digitize your business. Uh, and we're seeing actually a lot of companies struggle with that, right? They had a certain delivery mechanism and now they're forced to go online only. And that begs a lot of questions. We want to make it easy for them. And, um, you know, truly use single stop API and free services. You can't get easier than that. So we hope a lot of companies take advantage of it. Yeah, I mean, so let me make sure I heard you right. Three, three free months. Correct. Okay, that's one that's hard to say for someone like me, but it's very easy to grasp what it is that you're talking about when you do that. That's um, I'm I'm telling you, man, right now, for um, SMEs across, man, take your pay. I don't care what deal you're on uh, in the U.S., just getting devastated, right? We talk about this on the show all the time. Um, so anything that helps them with their cash flow, anything that kind of, you know, can get them going even further. It means everything, especially on the digital side of this. And, and I'm, I'm curious, Zach, 
Um, I know what I'm seeing is I'm seeing the bigger companies get bigger, right? And 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 I, I, to be honest, I don't have a terrible issue with that. I mean, talking about companies like Amazon, Walmart, um, Target here in the U.S., um, they were well positioned when it comes to digital delivery, right? But you know, when you're a small mom and pop store, you're a company of less than say 30 employees, which is actually a decent sized company. That's hard, you know, to to be able to to provide those type of services. Um, so is this mainly focused on the customer onboarding side? Well, just to, just speak to that, Sam, you know, there's, there's good news and bad news there. Yeah. Um, you know, the bad news is, is that the folks that were already experimenting with bringing either a portion of their entire offering online are, are ahead of the now, obviously. Right? Um, good news with that is it really is easy. You know, it can be very easy to uh, create an onboarding experience. Uh, there are a lot of tools out there that are plug and play. Uh, you know, we're happy to be one of them in a stack. When I think about what it takes to digitally transform, you know, typically a brick and mortar face-to-face -face business, uh, there is a lot out there uh, that can be up and running pretty fast. And so I would encourage folks to uh, make an attempt. We've seen, um, it, it's, it's devastating and, um, you know, there have been projects delayed here and there because of what's happening, but we've seen, um, you know, also an uptake of, of customers that are accelerating their plans right, to launch just because of that reason. So um, it's, a, it's a time unlike, you know, any other that I think we've seen um, in recent history, but there is light at the other side of that tunnel, and I would encourage folks to, to really take advantage of what's being offered out there, especially through the Stand for Small program. Um, and, and try to get online as fast as possible. You know, I, that's actually something I've heard uh, quite a bit, Zach, from, from different sources. So I've mentioned this a few times. Um, every Wednesday night, I host like a virtual happy hour, which <laughs> definitely bleeds into more like a happy two hours um, <laughs> with folks on Zoom. We keep it to about six people from multiple industries, uh, but we get, we get on, we drink, and we just talk about what we're seeing. And a consistent, yes, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I missed the last part there. Yeah. Hey, sorry, I think I think you cut out a little bit. I can't I can't hear exactly what you're saying. Oh, that was wonderful. I love LinkedIn Live. Um, Zach, here's what I want you to do. I want you to, to actually forget truly you, right? I want you to create a web streaming service that isn't shit <laughs> and doesn't do nonsense like this. Uh, no, what I was going to say is um, one of the things that uh, I've noticed in this, this gathering I do every Wednesday night with folks across the industries is they're seeing consistently with companies like yourself and others a an actual increase in the engineering work that's getting done, right? This big shift to saying, hey, this is actually a time where we can speed up. This is a time where we can move and we can get stuff into market even faster. Um, and, and, in a, and in a case like Truly You, one where you don't impact your end users, right? I mean, what you do is so important, um, but I'm, we're, we're seeing that over and over again, right? A shift away from maybe BD as much for marketing and just heads down in engineering to say, all right, there's a massive need we need to fill. Um, we know that folks are shifting more and more into these digital services. So how do we account for that, right? And how quickly can we get stuff out the door? And which means you're also setting standards for the industry. Well done on 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 projects and roadmap items getting out there. One thing, Zach. One thing I'm really curious on. I'd like to get from you um, the fraud side of this. Um, there's a lot of us wondering what kind of numbers we're going to see, right? Obviously, there's going to be an increase in fraud. That's normal. But when we're doing this much digital um, uh, shopping, if you will, or, or, or living our lives through my daughter's bedroom, for example, or our living room, are you seeing a massive or a jump in fraud? Uh, you know, the, the latest numbers won't be available for a little bit of time since they always look back. Yeah. You know, every year we see tens of billions of dollars um, in identity fraud and address, uh, you know, online. And so it, it's, it's, it's a serious concern, and I think that folks have to make sure they put in place the right tools to prevent it. Now, the good news is 
We recently actually did a, a very cool report where we polled a variety of folks in the U.S. and the U.K. and, and, and an overwhelming percentage of respondents now actually state that they are okay with some friction in the process as long as it's identified as a fraud prevention or identity verification uh, purpose. And so while on the other side of that, um, you know, over 70% of respondents, you know, understand that the account opening process, that first interaction with an online service really makes or breaks the relationship and they're becoming increasingly intolerant of a poor experience, surprise, surprise. Um, they are actually amenable to purpose-driven fraud prevention and purpose-driven identity verification as long as it's done securely. So actually, um, you know, while I think there was potentially uh, an expected level of fraud previously, um, customers now are much more attuned to the fact that it damages everybody, right? It's not, uh, it's, it's a negative for, for both the users and the businesses. And so putting in additional steps, putting in additional tools that prevent that are actually reassuring to the relationship and go a long way to securing a customer on the long term. So all of our responses and all of our studies point to the fact that putting in good identity verification tools, fraud prevention tools, it actually drives revenue um, as opposed to potentially having part abandonment or other drop off that we saw before. And this is the type of live feedback you like to get, Zach. So Siddharar actually just said, hey, brilliant solution. I just cracked open your API. So there you go, everybody, getting real-time instant feedback. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Keep it coming. Yeah, we'd love to hear it. Yeah, that's what you'd like to hear. All right, folks, we, we've run out of time. We're up against the hour. Um, and I, I know you and I both going to need to go out shopping, get better shirts. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll coordinate with you through Kim. Um, Zach, I want to I wanna thank you for joining. Where can people find more about Truly You? And, and, yeah. and engage with you, too. Where's a good place to engage with you? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm at, I'm on Twitter, uh, you know, Zach, uh, Zach Trulio, uh on Twitter and uh, everything else can be found at Trulio.com, T-R-U-L-I-O-O.com. We've got some great resources for folks that are new to the space. Uh, we'll jump on a call with anyone within a couple minutes um, and check out our, our instant onboarding API. You can uh, you can plug and play right quick. Just do the website. Yeah, definitely reach out to Zach. You got to love somebody who goes all brand and commits like that. So again, it is truly a, truly you Zach on Twitter, which made me laugh. Good for you. Um, Liz and Breeze at Kim Hong in San Diego is all happy. You know, it's like, yes, that's what I want to see. Everyone else, thanks for joining tomorrow. We're joined by Ryan Cobwell from MX. Um, if you've never seen Ryan or listened to Ryan talk, um, just like Zach, he's a real deal, man. I love Ryan. I love the team at MX and what they're doing. Um, and I, let's let me be frank: the the team at um, Truly You, even though I've tried to convince them to say Truly O, uh, the team at Truly O has been really good partners with 11FS since we started. We've we've been able to do a lot of things with them. I uh, really enjoy working with the team. Everybody, let me know who you'd like to have on the podcast. All right. Reach out to us. You can email us at podcast at 11fs.com. Reach out to me, Sam Mall on Twitter. Let us know who you'd like to see on. Thank you for joining and spending your morning with us. We really do enjoy it. And we'll see you tomorrow. And right